Welcome back, everybody. Big Mess, Mesa Branch Outdoors. And today, we're going to be tying, not psych, we're going to be talking about the different jaw configurations that you can use with your Norvice fly tying system. Thank you folks for jumping in today. I hope you stick around and wait till the end of this video because there's a lot of great information out there for you. And believe it or not, I actually tied that streamer for the Norvice fly tying March Madness competition a couple of years ago before an abrupt ending had to happen. And that is for a topic for another day and we're not going to jump into it. But anyway, thank you folks for stopping by. If you've not already, please hit that subscribe button. It takes money and it takes time for us to make these videos and we are not charging you to watch them. So if you want to help us grow our channel, we would love to have you do that. And please comment down below. It's great hearing from you folks, hearing from a lot of people out there from across the country, uh, California, even other countries as well. Um, as far as Italy um, has chimed in there. I want to thank Harrison. Harrison came up last week. I took Harrison fishing. You'll see Harrison comment on a lot of videos there. I want to try to put a picture up here in the corner of a fish that Harrison caught. If everything works, maybe up here you'll see that. And congratulations to the Harrison. We had a great uh, half day on the water doing some fly fishing here in West North Carolina. And if you want to fish for me, there is a link down below in the description. You can click on to book a trip with me. Make sure you ask for me. Uh, Shannon, big mess. Anyway, so let's get into today's video. Norvice fly tying system is unique for a lot of reasons. Number one, it's made in the USA, has an amazing warranty on it. But I think most importantly, the thing that's overlooked with this system is the fact that unlike a lot of systems on the market, this one here, you can truly customize. When I say customize, I'm not talking about colors. I'm not talking necessarily about standard hub, large hub, stainless, brass. We get it. I understand that. But this is going to be able to uh, transform to you the tire based upon what you're tying. What I'm trying to say is, in a lot of words, is the fact that this thing will accommodate anyone who ties trout flies to someone who ties saltwater flies and then everyone else in between. And I think that's super important when you're looking at making a purchase out there. If you're a current owner in Norvice, and I'm sure a lot of you are, and you maybe have thought about getting a, an additional jaw, maybe this video will help you with that decision. Or if you're looking at purchasing Norvice, hopefully this here will clarify some things about the configurations that you can do at your time of purchase. So right off the bat, here in my Norvice fly tying system, I have our standard jaw. This is a jaw that I probably use 80% of the time. Could be a little bit more depending on the time of the year. But this jaw I use to tie pretty much all of my dry flies and nymphs, even down to size 20s uh, there. Whether it's a curved hook, a standard hook, uh, it doesn't matter. I tie a lot of flies on this particular jaw. I really love the, um, the way that it does spin in the true center axis. I'm able to do, as I say, 88 out the gate. This is great for spinning on your dubbing, making your chenille with your peacock curl and things of that. I just really enjoy this particular jaw. It just works for me. But there are others out there who like the fine point jaw better or they like the saltwater jaw because they're doing saltwater. But at the end of the day, it has one job. It has to hold your hook and it has to hold it effectively. And this jaw will do that for you. My suggestion is... If you are just trying, uh, excuse me, tying trout flies, maybe some small streamers, uh, some scuds and things of this, this jaw is going to be that all around utilitarian jaw that's going to get the job done for you. Just go with it. It works exceptionally well. Now, one of the things I am going to point out to you folks at home is back here, you see this spring and we have our cam locking mechanism. It has, the question has come up on our Facebook page that what is that spring for? Well, I want to take this off. If I remove that clip, we'd be able to take this jaw apart. You have your cam locking system here, but when you put this jaw into your hub, you want to make sure that that spring is pushed all the way up against that cam lock. It is integral to make this jaw hold the hook properly. 
it's super simplistic, but it just works. And that's why that is there. And that's the job. Now it will hold materials for you. So if you got some longer feathers and things of that nature, you can use it as a materials clip, but it will get the job done for you. So let's move on to the fine point jaws. The fine point jaw is a jaw that I thought I would use more of, but there are a lot of people who do use the fine point jaws more than I do actually. Uh, this one here is pretty, I wanna say it's unique, but it is designed to give you that access into the back of the hook. Now you're still gonna be able to spin on that true center axis. The new design has got you further away from the hub itself, so it allows you to get your left hand if you're right hand tire, or your right hand if you're a left hand tire, in there for your materials. Um, this comes with a couple of different things. I'm gonna read directly from the Norvice website there for you. The new fine point jaws are set at a shallower 30 degree angle, uh, and they do spin more smoothly than the current 45 degree design while providing excellent access for small stuff, tying around the bin and pinching material onto the, in addition, in addition, the upgraded version of these jaw projects further away from the hub. Well, like I say, and it's coming out further for you, creating uh, uh, a more comfortable placement for your left hand or right hand, as I mentioned to you earlier. The fine point jaw comes with all three angles, a 15 degree, a 30 degree, and a 45 degree. So if you wanna change that, that's perfect. It's up to you to be able to change that and configure that the way you want it to be changed. It's quick and easy, uh, it's easy to do, it's awesome. Now, the newer one, the upgraded version of the fine point jaw is incompatible with older style Norvices with a half inch diameter jaws. So if you have a much, much older Norvice, you might wanna drop them a line at info at nor-vice.com and see if it will work in your particular vice. If not, tell me them we're gonna be able to get you squared away and make sure that you are doing what you need to do. But just as an example, I wanna take this little CDC caddis and put in there I could stick it in there like so, and I'd have the ability to get around the bend of that hook. Really cool with scud hooks, things of that nature. You might want to get in there, larvas uh, that you're doing. But for me, I don't use this jaw as much as I thought I would. It's a great presentation jaw when you're presenting a fly at a show uh, because of what you can see with it. Good jaw, holds the hook exceptionally well. But for me though, I do more with the standard jaw, but I do see people who do more with this one here. Now, I've seen people doing a lot with the game changers with this here before the other jaw configuration came out. So um, it's certainly a great option for you there. And at the end of the day, these jaws are not that expensive too for what you get. The next jaw I wanna to talk to you about is going to be our large shank jaw, maybe called a saltwater jaw for some of you folks out there, but it does get, uh, it, it gets reference to that. This jaw, as you can see here, is very, very large. It's beefy, guys. Uh, it's gonna slide into your hub. Whether you have a Magnum hub or a standard hub, it's gonna spin in the same way. Same locking me mechanism that we have in our standard jaw, but it's in a much, much larger capacity. This is for you folks that are tying big flies, big hooks, saltwater stuff. This is the cat's meow, guys. It holds. I have actually seen people at the show, I'm not telling you what to do. Disclaimer, put these in, put in, uh, I've seen Tim do this, put one of these saltwater jaws in there and just totally bend the hook uh, or even break the hook. And I have actually seen the granite base come up off the table. I'm not suggesting you do that. The point I'm making is, is that these jaws will hold exceptionally well. As you can see with the link, you're able to get those longer style flies tied there for you. It's certainly for that person who is doing maybe warm water, salt water stuff, this would be an excellent option to have to your vice. Or, you know, this may be the only jaw that you want, and that's something that Tim and them will be able to work with you there at Norvice when it comes to that. So there you go. Believe it or not, I did tie this, surprisingly, and uh, even surprised myself because that is not my specialty for sure. The next jaw, I'm actually going to take the hub off there for you. And we're gonna talk about the shank jaws. The shank jaws came out, uh, I can't, maybe three, four years ago. And this jaw is pretty cool. So as you can see, it is actually in the center of the hub here. 
and I'm going to you're going to put that on just like so. And when we spin this rascal, as you can see, we're truly in line at that particular point. Now, the benefit of this particular jaw is designed to hold straight type intruder shanks, loop shanks, game changer and micro changer uh, shanks. Um, that's what's unique about this one here. Now, this is the one that Braden will pick up when I'm not home and he's tying some game changers. It would have been kind of cool to have that jaw when I was doing this for the March Madness competition, but there's like several little shanks in here in this micro changer that I did. I tied a game changer um, with uh, hen, Indian hen feathers there. And um, it works really, really well with this and this is where I see a lot of people using this particular jaw is with those shanks but just to give you an idea of how well that spins I want to throw that little micro changer in there I'm afraid to fish it it'll probably catch fish though man it's awesome um, I always take it to the show and people look at they they look at it I couldn't believe I did it myself but put you can imagine putting those little shanks um, in there and I apologize I don't have any here with me but you get the point it's gonna go in there like so those intruders that's what this guy's designed for, and that's definitely where it sells. If you notice, you got a lot of room here between your hub and where you're gonna have your shank at, but some people actually use it for tying flies as well, and that's perfectly fine too, but its sweet spot is gonna be with those shanks uh, in, in the production or in that building process of those particular type of flies um, there. The one thing I do not have, folks, is the tube fly tying system. But you can imagine it's going to be similar to this, but off the front, it's going to have your tube fly attachment there for you. And I do not have that. I have never tied one of those. <clears throat> Would not know where to start, but I know where you can learn. It's on our new Vi uh, Norvice YouTube channel. You can see uh, other folks doing that on the new Norvice YouTube channel there. So hopefully this here has been a good explanation for you folks. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is, is irregardless of whether you have a Magnum hub or a standard hub, these jaws are going to enter a change in those, which is awesome. And that's the nice thing about the Nor vice is that everything on, in, on this particular vice is interchangeable um, as well for you folks there. Um, want to thank you for the support for our channel. If you have questions, you can email me and I say an email, it's it's messerbranchoutdoors at gmail.com. If you want to send photos of some of the flies you've tied, that's how you can get them to me, and I sure can get those posted up there. Also, check out the Norvice YouTube channel and Hackles and Hurls uh, Fly Fishing YouTube channel as well. There's some really good videos that uh, Britt and Brian are doing out there in Idaho. And of course, uh, a lot of our ambassadors and team members on the new Norvice channel. Make sure you go take a look at that and give that a like. <clears throat> Thank you folks for making this far with me. Hope to see you back here in a couple of weeks and have a uh, maybe another fly there for you. But this has been weighing on me here and I wanted to get that out there to you. It's easy to sit here and talk about tying a caddis or tie, you know, tying a mayfly or whatever. But what makes this fly tying system unique and what allows me to make a better fly and a quicker fly. It's the tools that I use, and I wanted to go over that with you. Uh, folks, y'all take care, and we'll catch you on the next fly time video.